visitor? Actually, I think that is, it's a, is, is Stacy mentioned it, are, are multiple factors that we have to take into consideration. Is is definitely a certain predisposition that we have. We we talk about the multifactorial reasons for obesity. We have a little bit of predisposition, some of us, but definitely the cultural environment, maybe even the type of food. We really never analyze very strictly what do we eat nowadays. Do we eat the same type of food that we ate? 20, 30 years ago? Maybe not. I actually challenged it. I would say that probably not. Probably so not. So all these elements are, 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 are playing a major role, and it's so difficult to change them. But I think that if we could do this, that would be really the, the better answer than doing surgery. Of course, we sure. do it surgery because the, the disease has occurred already. If we could prevent it, it's definitely the best way. Sure. Well, let's talk a little bit about the surgeries that are out there, then sure. we'll get back to some of these topics. Okay. I know you have a, a stomach here, well, someone's well, model of a stomach, yes. That's exactly correct. It doesn't look that big, so it looks like a pretty good one. But let's talk first about gastric bypass. That's the one you hear a lot, and I always hear stomach stapling. Is that what that is? Actually, uh, the change are probably, uh, uh, the, the terms are probably wrong. Stomach stapling was the initial type of surgery what was started in 50s and 60s, and uh, Route 70 became a little bit more popular. And uh, it was the concept to create a division of the, to separate the stomach from the rest of the stomach in order to limit the amount of food. That has been uh, modified multiple times. And actually nowadays, the term RU and Y, mm -hmm. gastric bypass, is a completely different type of surgery, much better, much safer, I would, th I would say. So what is so it? The, the RU and Y gastric bypass is actually a um, type of surgery that utilizes both mechanisms that are available for losing weight. Number one, we create a st small stomach pouch in the upper part of the stomach by cutting the stomach and sewing with a machine that is called stapler. That creates a restriction the amount of food that we eat. So that utilizes the first concept of weight loss surgery, which is a restrictive surgery. Right. So on this stomach, show me where this, you're talking about. Can you show us yeah, what you would do? It doesn't really um, fit with this um, stomach where it has a bend on top, but mm -hmm. essentially we want to imagine cutting the stomach here, mm -hmm. here and there, to create the same small stomach pouch in the upper part. We, we call the upper part of the stomach kind of like a brain of the stomach because it's able to perceive when it's stretch enough and gives the feeling of fullness to the brain. Mm -hmm. In addition to this restrictive component, then the small bowel that comes and gets out of the stomach is divided approximately 20 inches further away from the stomach. So the lower end is brought up here and connected with the stomach pouch we call that limb the ru limb or the alimentary limb. Actually, the surgery is named by the from the French surgeon Dr. Ru, mm -hmm. who came up with this concept initially after reconstruction uh, secondary to significant stomach surgery after the cancer. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, the same concept is utilized for our weight loss surgery. Mm -hmm. The lower end of the bowel is connected to the bowel again. And that brings the juices from the liver and the pancreas, the biliopancreatic juices. So the food is restricted here mm -hmm. and then jumps over the stomach and the small bowel, creating a degree of malabsorption. In other words, the food is not really properly uh, processed and, and uh, absorbed because it jumps over a segment of the stomach and small bowel. Right, so you're not taking in as much, therefore That's you're not going to gain as much weight. Correct, but in addition to this, you reduce the absorption of the nutrients. That is why this surgery, we call it a mixed surgery utilizing both components, malabsorptive, mm -hmm. in other words, lower absorption, right. and restrictive, because of the stomach pouch is very small. Okay. So that is actually the Ruan Y gastric bypass, which is very, very different than the concept of stapling. Okay, and then lap band is the one you hear a lot now. We have a graphic of that. If we can take a look at that lap band graphic and talk about it a little bit. Dr. Perlman, can you describe what a lap band surgery is? Sure. Um, lap band is, is kind of a term. There are two companies actually providing adjustable gastric banding right now, the lap band and the realized band. And basically what both of them do is create a small restrictive stomach pouch. So you're essentially banding the top of the stomach. There is a band of muscle at the bottom of the stomach that prevents our stomachs from just automatically emptying food into the intestine. What we're doing in essence is moving that band up to the top of the stomach so that you only have a small stomach about the size of an egg that's functionally useful. 
Okay, and then there's a third one that we talked about a little bit, or at least I'm, mm -hmm. I'm aware of, called the gastric sleeve. Right. There that is. How does that one work? A sleeve gastrectomy, actually, it's a very good procedure, and um, uh, it was developed initially with the concept uh, of uh, making a bridge for patients who are too heavy to have a gastric bypass and oh. too risky. So that was the initial concept. Let's cut the stomach, make it long, and then in the second stage do a sleeve gastrectomy, I'm mean, sorry, bypass. But actually it was discovered that many of these patients do lose enough weight just by creating a long, narrow tube from the stomach. <laughs> and then this tube became narrower and narrower and narrower, so the procedure was adjusted and refined. And nowadays is a procedure that actually is used by itself. Uh, the concept is that we create a restriction of the amount of food that we eat. But actually, if you look at that picture there, you see that the right side of the stomach is uh, removed completely. Yeah. The interesting part is that in the right side of the stomach, we have a lot of hormones. One of them, we call it ghrelin. That hormone actually is related to the degree of hunger that we have. More ghrelin you have, more hungry you are. So if we remove that segment of the stomach, we actually get rid of many of the cells which produce that ghrelin. So the mechanism is much more complex. It actually goes back to probably what we could stay here and elaborate forever. How does it bariatric surgery work? And yes, in a simple way, work in the way in which you describe it, but actually it's not so easy. There are multiple mechanisms, right. and I think that correlates and goes back together to the concept of uh, of uh, the fact that the digestive system is one of the most probably complex systems that we have, and we still don't understand it. What's the